Mr. Clark. I seek leave to move a no motion of no confidence in the Deputy President. Is leave granted? Leave's granted. Mr. President, I move that the Senate has no confidence in the Deputy President. I move, I move this, uh, this motion with regret, Mr. President. I move, I move, I, I move it, I move it with regret. Order, order. There will be no interjections, Senator Hill. It's not the first time the deputy president has lost the confidence of this side of the chamber, but it's the first time that we have taken taken this action, and we've taken it because of the extraordinary action of the deputy president tonight. I've been now here for 10 years. And apart from on one occasion late at night due to an unfortunate mixture of circumstances, nobody. I, no, no. No. That's offensive to Senator Walters. No person has Order. been. No person has been named. Senator Kemp. On our side, Senator. Senator. Senator Kemp was named tonight, it seems, because he laughed. Well, what was it? He, was he was named order. because he laughed. In an environment where he was Senator Hill's got the call. In an environment where he was more than entitled to laugh. As he said himself, he had every reason to laugh at the presentation of Senator Richardson. He had every reason to laugh at the behaviour of the Labor Party today. How is laughing? disorderly in terms of Standing Order 203. Is it persistently and willfully obstructing the business of the Senate? No one can say that Senator Kemp did that. Is it disorderly conduct? Surely it's not disorderly conduct within the normal meaning of that expression. It's certainly not objectionable words. He's certainly not willfully refusing to conform with the Standing Orders. And he's not willfully disregarding the authority of the chair by laughing at Senator Richardson. It is well within reason of what can be fairly expected in a debate of this nature in this chamber. The truth is, Mr. President, the Deputy President lost control and saw the only way of getting himself out of that difficulty was to throw someone out. That is not the level of performance that the Senate should be entitled to expect from the Deputy President. As I've said, Mr. President, it is in the light of other circumstances that have occurred in recent times where this side of the chamber has been particularly unhappy with his performance. But we haven't moved in this way because it's not obviously not a course of action that we would desire to take. But tonight it is beyond all sense of reason and we therefore see that we have no alternative but to take this action. And I therefore move, as I said, that the Deputy President no longer have the confidence of this chamber. Senator, Senator Button, uh, we're entering a difficult time uh, in the pre-Christmas period when there is a lot of business for the Senate to be conducted and uh, a lot of parties have been conducted outside, I guess, and that, that uh, makes it... Point of order, Mr. President. Point of order. I don't, I don't want to embellish the point of order I'm about to make, but there was an occasion in the old Parliament where Senator Button alleged that a member of the Liberal Party was found drunk on the lawn, and it took months and months and months for him to withdraw and apologise. Now I hope he's not again making an assertion of a very discolourful nature, which reflects improperly upon members on our side. Now whether the Labor Party themselves have been imbued with a sense of disaster or ecstasy, I don't know. But I ask that he withdraw any imputation on members on this side. Yeah. 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 Order. <laughs> well, you'd be one to talk. You'd be one to talk. Order. Order. <coughs> order. Order. I'm not going to let this get out of control. I heard Senator Button say, make a reference to parties. I didn't think he said a reference to a party on any particular side of the chamber, and that's why I did not take offence. We've been sitting for six weeks. That's what everyone's <laughs> Order. Uh, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. President, for your ruling. I made no reference to any political party. Senator Crichton Brown rose in a manner which uh, reminded me of the cap fitting. And, uh, <coughs> a, point, a point of order, Mr. A point of order, Mr. President. Order, order, the, the, order. Senator Crichton Brown, look, there are, there are too many unparliamentary remarks coming from behind you. Well, Mr. Now, I think this should Mr. be Mr. a President, reasonable debate. Mr. President, with respect, it's not for me to make judgments about the, the unparliamentary points that would have been made behind me or comments. But can I say it's always regrettable when Senator Button gets backed into a corner where you have this vicious, right. nasty little That's comment right. that seems to flow so freely from his mouth. Now, can I say with respect, if he continues to reflect improperly upon the integrity and the conduct of members on this side, you, sir, with respect, will continue to get proper points of order. Senator Button. Uh, I made no reflection in the remarks which I made on members of the opposition. And uh, if, you're, if anybody is sensitive about that, I again repeat, I made no remarks which reflected exclusively on the opposition. Now let me say, uh, Mr. Mr. President, uh, we're, we're reaching the uh, end of the, uh, uh, the session of the Parliament, and uh, of course there is uh, business still to be considered. And earlier this evening, the opposition, uh, seeking to contrive, uh, sought to contrive, in the absence of any interest in the community outside. Uh, in, in the Senate's deliberations tonight, I think the community outside would be concerned to see that the Senate completed its business. That's what they would be concerned about. And uh, well, well, I, I would think that was what the community expected. Ex ex expected. Uh, that's what the community ex would have uh, would have expected of the Senate uh, tonight. But of course, the Senate tonight, uh, the opposition moved a resolution to uh, suspend standing orders. Uh, to enable them to take, you know, on this night, in, in the interest of being seen as being politically virile, uh, to enable them tonight to debate uh, the uh, new prime minister of this country, and and, uh, and Mr. Uh, Mr. President, that was an issue. That was the issue which was before the Senate. Now, Senator Hill gets up and moves subsequent to that, in relation to Senator Kemp's exclusion from the chamber. Senator Hill gets up and moves subsequent to that vote and that debate and that vote that uh, Senator, uh, Senator Colston no longer has the confidence of the Senate and says, I, and says, I move this motion with regret. So he ought to. So he ought to move it with regret because it is unprecedented or almost unprecedented in terms of the deliberations of the Senate. And of course it's unprecedented and uh, almost unprecedented, I'm sorry, and it's done tonight. It's, it's done tonight because of the failure of the previous resolution. Now, uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, well, Sen 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 Order. Senator Crane, Senator Crane says nonsense. Well, he, he had, uh, I, I would have thought uh, his behaviour was transparent, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, uh, in terms of uh, Senator uh, Senator Colston's ruling. Uh, of course, managing a chamber such as this, as Senator Colston was doing, in, in, difficult, in very difficult circumstances, when there is acrimonious debate taking place in the Senate, is not an easy task. And uh, Senator, the Senator, is, as Deputy President, is entitled to make judgments about these matters, which, unless they are horrendously, uh, horrendously out of line with the standing orders, are judgments. Are judgments which, uh, which should be respected by the Senate, uh, judgments which should be respected by the Senate, and which I believe are respected and were respected by a majority of the Senate. Were, uh, Senator, were respected by a majority of the Senate, and it is a majority of the Senate that is important in determining this issue. So, uh, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Mr. President, uh, Senator Hill made all sorts of. Uh, allegations about uh, uh, the opposition being unhappy with Senator Colston's performance, not just tonight but on previous occasions. We haven't heard about it before in terms of a resolution. We've not, we've not heard about it. We've, we have not heard about it before in terms of a resolution of this kind. This is the first time this is the first time that a resolution of this kind is moved by the Leader of the Opposition, and it is moved uh, with regret. You know, I was overseas, Senator McDonald. Brilliant, brilliant conclusion. Don't get, too ex don't get too excited about that. 
Now, Mr. President, uh, the, the, of course the government will not uh, uh, contemplate this action by the opposition. We have confidence in the deputy president of this uh, Senate. The majority of the Senate has confidence in him, and uh, I think the matter be, ought to be resolved as quickly as possible. Senator Austin. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've been in this chamber now for uh, almost six years, and uh, during that time, I've uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to observe the, the great degree of difficulty and strain that can attach to uh, presiding over the conduct of this chamber. And, uh, Senator Doug McClellan, your predecessor, I think, performed remarkably well, and on this side there was a very high degree of support and acceptance for his performance. For our own part, we had Senator Hamer as deputy chairman, deputy president, and again, I thought, uh, showed a great deal of uh, sense and discretion. And uh, you yourself, Mr. President, I have to say, have uh, done, I think, uh, a very good job in uh, almost uh, every situation you've been placed in. There are times, of course, when uh, difficulties arise, and uh, we'll have our disagreements. But by and large, you have demonstrated the flexibility and tolerance that is an essential part of presiding over this chamber. And that's where it is uh, with great regret that we have to say that Senator Colston has simply not measured up to that task. On the one hand, he has sought to uh, throw his weight around in such a way that uh, he, had makes, he demeans the office of deputy president. He brings the chamber into disrepute by rising inappropriately, uh, quite often ahead of time, and as tonight amply demonstrates, with no regard to the circumstances. Now, one would have thought, if you're in politics, you are acutely sensitive to matters of uh, high drama and indeed melodrama. And if tonight's not one of those occasions when, for the first time in history, the Labor Party's thrown out uh, not only its most successful leader but uh, a prime minister uh, that it's uh, previously regarded very highly, I can't imagine a more uh, charged atmosphere. And yet Senator Colston purports to act as though this is just another debate, just another discussion amongst uh, competing forces, and something that uh, doesn't deserve to even have uh, an exchange of, of views, an exchange of interjections, an exchange of laughter. All those things are part of the give and take in this place, part and parcel of making democracy work. And in almost every instance, the chair, uh, with you in it in particular, has been flexible enough to allow that to happen. And the great tragedy of Senator Colston's misrule and uh, the way in which he's presided, not, not just on this occasion, but I think amply demonstrated in the way that he reacted with Senator Bohm, was to overreact in the first instance and then make a complete fool of himself by backing off. I mean, if he had any guts, he would have proceeded with the sort of motion that we've been forced to tonight by the treachery of the Democrats. Now, if ever there were, if ever there were double— Not all of them. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree entirely. And, and again, that is a double tragedy because the way Senator, Colston, uh, Senator uh, Coulter performed was such that he didn't even seem to understand the basis. Uh, yes, well, there's not much honesty at the top in the Democrats, and we've known that for quite some time. But that is, that is just part of the side tragedy. But the real tragedy is that we have had in this chamber a deputy president who is clearly incompetent. And it gives us no joy to say that, because I think we are all prepared to accept that in the heat of the moment you can make mistakes, that uh, you do need to back off from time to time. Senator Ray tonight, I thought, was a very good example of that quite clearly, didn't want it matters to go the direction they, that they did. But you had no conception on the part of the Deputy President that somehow there was a need to try and resolve the matter. It would have been uh, quite permissible for him to have invited the Democrats to back off or to have uh, somehow accepted the explanation given by uh, Senator Kemp, but indeed we had, we had a succession of errors on the part of the Deputy President, not even beginning to comprehend that uh, a senator is entitled to natural justice, is entitled to know on what basis he's been warned and then named, uh, demanding that somehow he had to give a, a, an apology when clearly the standing orders don't require that, uh, not really heeding the explanation given, not being prepared to accept that uh, there were circumstances that would justify overlooking uh, any uh, minor misdemeanour, and that's about as high as you could possibly place it, and again singling out someone that, uh, from where I sat, uh, committed no greater offence than probably half of this chamber tonight. And, and that, 
That is why it's such a sad state of affairs that uh, you don't have the confidence of the chamber when suddenly someone is singled out for behaviour that almost everyone else would regard as fair and reasonable in the, in the fairly highly charged circumstances of the night. And uh, that's where judgment's required. That's where discretion's required. Senator Colston manifestly lacks either of those qualities. He's been given an opportunity over a long period of time to demonstrate that he can learn on the job, that uh, he can uh, use tact and discretion, that he can familiarise himself with standing orders. But what we've found time and again is that he has no understanding of the standing orders, constantly has to have it explained to him by the clerk, and uh, generally demonstrates an inability to handle the affairs of the chamber. And, and that, that is a very sad state of affairs, Mr President, and that's what brings us to the position that we're at tonight. Uh, we, we are very much united behind Senator Kemp. We don't regard him as having committed uh, any offence, certainly not within the terms of uh, Standing Order 203E, persistently and willfully disregarding. I mean, if, if what Senator Kemp did tonight, whether or not you regard it as more than laughing, if that is somehow characterised as persistent and willfully disregarding the chair, we might as well close up shop and go home. Everyone would be guilty of an offence every five minutes. And you know, Mr President, in question time, in question time, there's a fair bit of give and take. And I don't mind it. And I don't mind giving it, and I don't mind taking it. And by and large, we get by. I mean, some people can't keep quiet for five seconds. They come and say to you, they come and say to you, are you moving an amendment? You say no, and you're told I'm going to speak for no more than 60 seconds. Well, he went for six minutes on that occasion. I, I thought he, you said one minute. One minute, he said. Order. Now, now, that's the sort of uh, thing that we tolerate. And Senator Ray can get up and thump the table and carry on, and we accept it. Senator Richardson can go through the sort of mealy mouth performance we had tonight, and uh, we know he doesn't believe a word of it. We know uh, what sort of machinations that uh, have been undertaken over the last uh, six weeks or so. Again, we cop it. And unless you're prepared to have that spirit, you, this place can't work. And that's why. We're reluctantly driven to the position we take tonight, and uh, Mr. President, I have to say that uh, we cannot go on in this way. You brought matters to a resolution on another issue because you took the view you simply couldn't go on the way things were, and we take the same view tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Ray. Mr. Uh, President, we've often uh, in this chamber, when we've come to a debate standing orders, often referred to the most important one that's not there, and that's common sense shall prevail. And there's a couple of, um, couple of phrases, couple of phrases uh, that have been used by the uh, two opposition spokesmen tonight. They said uh, today is an extraordinary day. Well, certainly it was. And Senator Olson says there should be a lot of give and take in the chamber, and I agree with that. But I was here for the whole of that debate. And I think in my time in the Senate, I haven't heard so much noise coming from one side of the chamber as we did tonight. No, I think that's a, I think that's a fact. And I can understand why, and I don't condemn uh, the reasons for that, uh, that noise and joy. And, and it wasn't a question, Mr. President. Order. This was not a question tonight of the odd interjection floating across, but an absolute bar barrage. No, not just of laughter, Senator Newman. There are a whole range of things said. The second thing that I think disturbed me in the behaviour tonight is, irrespective of what that side of the chamber, this side of the chamber, may evaluate in a presiding officer. When the presiding officer gets to their feet, there, then there should be silence, and there wasn't tonight. The barrage continued. Well, you see, you say that's justifiable. That Senator Olson says that's just, a, just that you know he's lost the confidence. If, in fact, the chairman gets to his feet because it can't uh, can't uh, establish order, then silence should prevail. You all know that. You know that's the practice, and that's it. It didn't happen tonight. It's been said that Senator Kemp was picked out. I heard Senator Hill warned. I heard Senator McGibbon warned. And I saw Senator Kemp warned. Then later I saw Senator Calvert warned. Uh, well, you say all on this side. I'm, I say with due respect, Senator Bishop, 95% of the noise tonight, because some of us are a bit down, came from your side. And I, uh, I think that's the case. Now, where this uh, particular issue got away from us, I have to, have to explain to the Senate, and I hope some of the senators agree. Immediately, uh, Senator Kemp was named. Um, I think it was myself who made the point that we should hear an explanation. 
We then started to have a variety of points of order. At, at that point, Senator McMullen intervened, made a contribution, and said, let's get on with it. Everyone on this side, I must say, hold on, everyone order. on this side assumed that was the end of the issue. And what I didn't even realise that Senator Calder was talking to the point of order. And then he moved the motion. And, the, and I have to say here, the deputy president, when you read the standing orders, had no choice but to put it. The standing orders at that stage, it gave us no chance to intervene, us no chance to try to apply some common sense, us to apply some sort of interpretation to what Senator Kemp had said, because I took Kennedy's, Senator Kemp's explanation as probably being sufficient. Order. But we had no alternative. We had no alternative when the motion was put to, in fact, back up the deputy president. Now, uh, people say uh, at that point the deputy president could have backed off. He couldn't. Once the motion is moved, no. Once the motion is moved, the deputy Order. president must put it. Order. Which again goes to the point where traditionally those sort of motions are moved from this end of the, the chamber, traditionally, yes. and very rarely, in some occasions, they move from where Senator all, about where Senator Alston sits. And that's that tradition, I must say, should continue. However, we have been through an experience before. We have been through an experience before, in which a presiding officer some years ago named a disorderly senator, uh, and I, uh, I don't comment on the circumstances. And this chamber did not back up. No, 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 no. No, I'm not picking on anyone. I'm not picking on anyone. But this chamber did not back up the presiding officer, and I think this chamber was at fault. Exactly, exactly. We can concede that. Order, Senator I concede Ray that, the chair. But it's very Order. difficult for, for most people in the chamber not to back up a presiding officer who has named someone, and uh, that's what occurred here. Now, where do we take it from here, uh, Mr. President? I don't take it as far as to say I have lost confidence in the deputy chair. The other side does. The coalition does. I do not. I've seen him perform some very admirable performances in this chamber on difficult committee stages, complex committee stages, etc. And I again repeat, to me, and my experience in this chamber, I must say tonight was one of the noisiest that I've uh, gone through. No, it is. Isn't it? It, and it, it wasn't really one of those give and take ones this time. There's a lot of given, and we were taking it all on this particular side. Now, uh, you know, some reference was made uh, going back to, uh, to the election or non-election of Senator Crichton Brown. I mean, I thought he took his defeat rather well, and I don't think that should intrude on uh, the debate or judgment at all tonight. Uh, uh, because a reference was made from uh, from your side, uh, Senator. Uh, by yourself saying that you know we made a mistake. Uh, Order. Uh, while you were waving bogon moths away is the way I took it. I just say this, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, in conclusion. I um, I say this, uh, Mr. President, in conclusion. Uh, today has been an interesting day, and I just uh, I just reflect in contrast with the experience I've been through today, <coughs> where I see someone who has uh, behaved uh, impeccably honorably etc and i come in and see some of this and i come in and see some of this puerile performance tonight and i'll remember this day of contrast a great australian uh, whose career ended today and a pack of puerile performers in this chamber and uh, that contrast will always stay with me i do not believe i do not believe the uh, opposition has made a sufficient case to warrant a motion of this seriousness but I do believe that uh, at some stage people from this chamber should enter into a dialogue to understand what is within the acceptable bounds of give and take uh, in the chamber. And there should be, as Senator Orson's right, there should be a fair latitude. It doesn't come to a point, though, I think, you'd, you'd agree, Senator Orson, to a total shouting down of someone trying to deliver a speech in this particular chamber. It bordered on that. Had it been a speaker other than Senator Richardson, who's got a pretty loud voice, they would have had absolutely no chance of being heard in this chamber. Absolutely no chance whatsoever. Mr. President, this is a serious, uh, this is a serious step by the opposition to move. Senator Hill has acknowledged how serious it is. I don't believe the case is sufficient, but I do think 
common sense should prevail more often in this chamber rather than a quick resort to standing orders, and that we should at some stage, and we're probably too tired in this period, to have some sort of discussion as to how the chair's authority is reinforced, especially when the chair is on their feet calling for order. Senator, point of order. To be misrepresented, I seek leave to make a brief statement in respect to that matter. So leave granted. Senator Crichton Brown. Mr. President, I've just put it for the record because the, the presumably flippant manner in which it was put by Senator Ray won't reflect in the hand, sir. Senator Ray, I thought, implied that there had been some motive from somebody on this side of the chamber to move this motion on the basis of Senator Colston defeating Senator Crichton Brown for the Deputy Presidency. I would hope that Senator Ray will acknowledge, for the benefit of the Hansard, that no mischievous intent was in his mind, because it certainly has not been implied from this side, nor would it be. And I like to think that all of us accept the decisions of this chamber with good grace and understanding. And I'd be deeply personally offended if, if I thought Senator if I thought Senator Ray were. I wonder why I just finish this, Mr. President. Yes, order, order, order. I'd, I'd ask Senator Collins and Senator Walters to stop interjecting. Oh. Oh. Senator Crichton. Thank Brown. you, Mr. President. I'd, I'd be grateful if, if Senator Ray would acknowledge that he wasn't impugning that or imputing that in any way. I so acknowledge and ask leave to have that put on the record. Senator Ray, Senator Bell. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> In the contributions so far from the coalition, part of the defence which has been offered has been that laughing was a natural response to the situation, or that it was a minor misdemeanour, or that it was a fair response. And that description has also been turned around to offer part criticism of the, uh, the deputy. Much of that is a matter of opinion so far. I'd like to offer two facts. Two facts which I think uh, myself and Senator Coulter are privy to, and perhaps nobody else on the, nobody on the, uh, the government bench and nobody else in the, uh, in the debate so far has acknowledged. The fact one was that I was standing next to Senator Kemp while he was chuckling and not disrupting the chamber but simply chuckling. Fact number two, I was still standing next to Senator Kemp when Senator O'Chee introduced a deliberate strategy of disruption. Senator O'Chee gave an instruction to not only Senator Kemp but several others, and I challenge, I challenge, <coughs> I challenge Senator O'Chee to deny that he said, and I quote, and I quote, keep laughing, they can't chuck you out for laughing, end of quote. Senator O'Chee orchestrated he danced from one place to another in a deliberate strategy which showed disrespect to this chamber and in particular provoked Senator Kemp to not laugh but to in fact make loud disruptive noises which mimicked laughter but which served only to disrupt this place and to interrupt the legislative processes. I submit, Mr President, that what we saw from Senator Kemp was part of a process orchestrated by Senator O'Chee, something which we saw from this end of the chamber and which disgusted us to such an extent that we thought it should be stopped so we could get on with the legislative process. Senator, Senator O'Chee. Order. Well, we will deal order. with that Order, Senator MacDonald. Senator O'Chee. We will deal with that interjection in a minute, Senator Bell, because I take umbrage at that suggestion. But the, uh, the comment I make, uh, Mr President, is that Senator Bell did not hear what I said correctly, and I want to put it on the record what I did say, because I make not one effort to resile from what I have said, and it is very simply this, that we cannot interject but there is nothing to stop us from laughing, and I was laughing genuinely, as many of the members on this side of the chamber were doing. And for Senator Bell to come in here and perform another stunt, hot on the heels of the one we have seen, 
is, I find, personally offensive. And now to be accused by Senator Bell of lying, Mr. President, is even worse. Is even worse. And I say that if Senator Bell has a problem with this hearing, then so be it. But I don't want him coming in here and trying this stunt on me, because I will not tolerate, tolerate it. And that is why I ought to put it on the record right here and now, so we can get on with this debate about a very substantive point. But Senator Bell is in here to score cheap shots. We are not. I challenge you to deny it. You didn't. Senator Haradine. <clears throat> Mr. President, uh, the motion that is before the chamber is a very serious motion indeed. It is a motion that suggests that the Senate has uh, no confidence in the Deputy President. It's a motion that, uh, <clears throat> in all of the 16 years that I've been here, I don't think I've heard uh, of uh, such a motion. Um, it's a motion that I believe that should be uh, supported by far more evidence than I've heard thus far. It should uh, reflect a <coughs> continuous discontent by uh, a majority of this chamber over the actions of the Deputy President, uh, such that would lead to such a, uh, a motion. Now, I haven't heard uh, that, um, uh, that um, uh, evidence uh, thus far. I don't think that, the, uh, that this motion uh, is appropriate to be moved because of one incident. Now, I must confess to the chamber that I left this, this uh, house at uh, around about five or ten minutes to seven this evening uh, to attend a commitment outside of the chamber, uh, thinking that the uh, transport uh, bill would still be before the chamber when I got back. I got back here, I think, at around about 25 or 20 to nine. Um, the car having picked me up at about quarter past eight, and the bells were ringing. I got to the, uh, I, I just about made it to the door, um, and uh, then I heard the reason that the bells were ringing was for a, a motion uh, that uh, Senator Bell, uh, uh, Senator um, uh, Hills, a motion to uh, suspend standing orders. So I wasn't aware of what had occurred before then. I wasn't in the chamber to observe um, uh, what happened insofar as Senator, uh, um, uh, Senator Kemp was concerned. Now, clearly, if there were concerns about what occurred then, the uh, clear um, uh, response would be to vote against uh, uh, the particular motion uh, that was uh, presumably moved on that occasion, and uh, thus register uh, your disagreement uh, with uh, the uh, action that had been taken. Whether that act, where you're registering disagreement against the action of the deputy president, or whether you're registering your disagreement with the action of the uh, of the person who moved the actual motion. And thus, you are registering your disagreement uh, uh, with the motion itself. Now, that's when the uh, well, well, you've already done that, uh, as I understand it. The opposition has registered uh, its objection to the action that's been taken, either by the deputy president or by the person who moved the motion. But uh, there has only been one reference made by the opposition. Uh, tonight, there's been general statements made about um, uh, about the deputy president's uh, um, uh, efficiency or otherwise in the job. General statements, no specific uh, mention, except about the occasion a couple of weeks ago. Now, uh, that occasion, I thought, was dealt with sensibly by the chamber. I thought it was dealt with sensibly by Senator Bohm. And I thought it was dealt with sensibly by the uh, uh, deputy president when he was chairman of the committee. It was a very difficult situation, and I observed and I thought that it was dealt with sens sensibly. Now I've um, then served in this chamber, uh, and uh, uh, during those years, I suppose there's been four or five 
uh, deputy presidents uh, uh, that have been that have occupied that uh, persons that have occupied the position of deputy president. And one of the functions of deputy president, of course, is that of chairman of committees. And if you've got no confidence in the deputy president, you haven't got confidence in him as chairman of committees. Well, uh, well, I want to stand here and say that his performance as chairman of committees is as equal, equally good, if not better than any of those other deputy presidents that have served. He has been an intelligent, sensitive, considerate, tolerant and efficient deputy uh, uh, chairman of committees. And uh, I, I certainly would not support uh, the resolution on the basis of the evidence that has been presented to us. I, I apologise for not being here tonight, but even if I were here tonight, you could not support this uh, resolution on the basis of one single incident. There's got to be a pattern of virtual misbehaviour by the deputy president for such a motion uh, to, to be supported uh, and accepted by the chamber. And uh, I certainly don't believe that that pattern, pattern of behaviour is there. Senator Archer. I too regard this as a matter of considerable seriousness. And you, Mr. President, Mr. Deputy President, and myself, along with Senator Harradine and Senator Walters, all started in this place on the same day. Now, we've had enough experience between us to know how this place operates and what sort of give and take is necessary to make it operate. Senator Ray produced the solution for what was going on tonight. But because of ignorance and stupidity and short-sightedness and one-upmanship, it didn't get the opportunity to work. Now, that is the real problem we are facing tonight. Section Clause 203, infringement of order, which was what caused this problem tonight, is, is fairly simple and straightforward. It says that a senator who has been reported as having committed an offence, and I've previously gone through the various offences, shall attend in the senator's place and be called upon to make an explanation or apology. Or apology. And then a motion may be moved that the senator be suspended from the sitting of the Senate. Senator Kemp very adequately made an explanation which would have been perfectly acceptable to you, Mr. President, and would have been perfectly acceptable to Mr. Deputy President. Perfectly acceptable. There was never any doubt about the nature of the explanation that was given by Senator Kemp. But here, this body tonight, through arrant stupidity, has put a plaster on Senator Kemp for the rest of his life that he got thrown out of the Senate for misconduct. That's what's happened as a result of some stupidity from further down the line. Now, I do object to that. I object to that far more than I object to the fact that we're dealing with, with a, a, a motion of, of uh, no confidence at the moment. It is a day of high emotion. I accept the fact that history has been made today, today and we're all part of it. Now, we don't often fit into this place when real history is made, but today is one of those days. There is a lot of emotion on both sides. There's a lot of emotion of conflict on either side, particularly on the other side. But this isn't the way to deal with it. And I just feel that you know, what, a, what a terrible thing we've done today as far as Senator Kemp is concerned. If you can get thrown out of the Senate for laughing, you couldn't get thrown out of the Senate in, uh, uh, 
in any place I can think of. Probably Ethiopia, you wouldn't. In Mongolia, you wouldn't. You know, where would you? Where would you get thrown out for laughing? And I don't think for an instant that Senator Colston would have thrown Senator Kemp out of the Senate for laughing. Now, whatever else. But I wouldn't have thought that the people opposite would have voted to throw him out either. And that's where the problem lies. Why did you mob over there vote to throw him out? You stupid lot. Look what you've done now. Order. Apart from the fact that you've Order. now got, it's half past nine at present. We could have started at eight o'clock. But because you wanted to play your games as a means of getting rid of the, the tension that you've built up during the day, it's half past nine. Now really, why can't we do something that can review this stupid decision that we've suffered and get on with the business like we're supposed to? Senator Alston was talking about a bit of give and take. Now that's what it's all about. Senator Ray was on about it. But why Senator Coulter wanted to be the main figure in the act today and so this is where we wind up. And that's what happens. Now really, Mr President, can't we do something to reverse this decision and get on with the business of the day? Senator McMullen. Order. The, the question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion say aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells. Order. Order.
Lock the doors. The question is that the question be now put. The ayes will pass the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Foreman teller for the ayes and Senator Brownhill teller for the noes. Order. Result of the division there being 32 ayes and 29 noes, the question is resolved in the affirmative. Order. The question now is that the motion moved by Senator Hill be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. I think the noes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Hill be agreed to. The ayes will pass the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Brownhill teller for the ayes and Senator Foreman teller for the noes. Order.
Order. Result of the division there being 28 ayes and 34 noes. The question is resolved in the negative. Would all senators please resume their seats? Would all senators please resume their seats?